Namaskar, this is Soumya. I am the director of Rooms here. I want to show you around and give you a little brief and share some anecdotes about the history of this palace. And I hope it will be interesting. This is the palace of the Maharaja of Tiri Garhwal. Uh, this was commissioned in 1881 when Maharaja Narendra Shah decided to shift the capital here. Ever since then, it, it has been 140 years that this has been standing tall. In fact, in 1881, Maharaja Narendra Shah did a seismographic study to see how safe is this place to build a palace like this. And only when it was asserted it was safe enough, he commissioned and constructed it. So this is the guest house which was added later in 1910 to host the guests of the royal family who mostly would travel on hunting expeditions. This was the Darbar Hall of the Maharaja, the King, which we have now converted into a lounge where we do our check-ins. It's a very beautiful formal area for the check-ins. Okay. In fact, the portrait on the wall that you see, the big one, that is the present coronated king, His Highness Manu Jindru Shah. So this is the billiard room of the royal family. The table here is as old as the palace. It was made by appointment for this room, manufactured by C. Lazarus and Company, who was established in India in 1820 in the erstwhile British capital of Calcutta. The gallery, the shade, the table, the scoreboard, everything here is as old. And this was anyways customized by appointment for this particular room. So do guests use this? Yes, it's open for everybody to come here 24 /7. This is the library which houses books through different generations of the royal family. Most of them are irreplaceable because the publications have shut down, so we don't issue the books. But it is open for people to come here, sit and read during the stay. So this no screen here is known as Mama Kalnath locally. So here in the hills, whenever a girl gets married, the maternal uncle has to buy the nose ring, which she has to wear in the wedding. Is that a tradition? It is a tradition. And that's the Viceregal Suite where the guests of the royal family will get hosted. The same room where Viceroy's like Lord Mountbatten had also come and stayed in the Australia era. And this is the only accommodation in the palace which is lettable in the hotel inventory and available for guests. Yes. Here the furnitures and fixtures are also as old, 111 years now. And they are all hand carved, whether it is a four poster bed or the ottoman or the folding table come tray. This is Maharaja Manu Bendra Shah, the present coronated king's father. There is a terrace, there is a wraparound terrace which oh. runs all three sides. And this is the Himalayas. So from this side you see the valley of Rishikesh with the course of the holy river which you can't see today because there is a cloud oh, cover. Yes. And the backdrop remains to be the hills. This will be beautiful in the summer I would imagine. Even spring is yes. very nice here, very pleasant. So from this side of the terrace you see the internal landscape and the garden. Yeah. Wow, the terraces. Huge. This place is referred to as the Winter Garden. I'll show you a very interesting map. Now, after the division of Garhwal, when the royal family was retaining Tiri Gar Garhwal, so this map was designed after that. So this is Tiri Garhwal. That's Narendra Nagar. That's where we are. Ananda in the Himalayas is situated. The course of the Holy River was taken as the division between Tiri and Pori. And when Pori Garhwal went to the British, in the map it is referred as British Garhwal. This map was designed on 11th December 1928. So this little abode on this terrace that you see is referred to as Ma Anandamoy Temple. Ma Anandamoy was a religious prophet who hailed from erstwhile Bengal. Today that part is in Bangladesh. And the royal family through generations still have very high reverence for her. She was invited to come and stay in the palace and bless the palace. But she being a prophet did not agree to enjoying the luxury and comfort of a palace. Hence this room was built for her by the king which is very humble, very basic. That's when she agreed to come and stay here off and on for a decade. We have kept it the way she has left it and converted it into a place of worship. Hence, it is called Ma Anandamoy Temple, as it says here on the plate. Ma Anandamoy would literally translate to mean mother filled with bliss. 
and it is a great coincidence that the hotel is also named Ananda. So that's the ballroom. Here on this side above, you will see the band stand. It's beautiful lady. Wherever you go, I've walked from one end to the other. Her eyes follow me and so does her foot. She's watching me. Can you see that? It's an art of painting, did you say? Yes, it is. I've never seen anything like it. And the king keeps an eye on you wherever you go. In the lounge, well, they say, in the palace. This is the yoga room. This used to be one of the dining options of the king and his guests. This is where I enjoy my yoga session every morning. And the book that you see kept there is Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is the most sacred book in our culture and custom. Oh, wow. So Bhagavad Gita is the most sacred or holy book in our culture. It is like the Bible for Christianity or the Quran for the Islam. Okay. Okay. Now this is the book which states the conversation between Lord Krishna and Arjuna just before the Kurukshetra battle starts. Because Arjuna was in a dilemma whether he should fight his cousin brothers or not. And Lord Krishna was trying to explain him that he has a job in hand which has to be completed. This is Maharaja Kirti Shah. Most of the books in the library are his collection. This little elevation that you see in the landscape, this used to be the swimming pool of the royal family which we now use as a water reservoir. And the cannon that you see on top, there are two such pieces. One is kept outside the main entrance and one here. These are all World War time, 1911-1912. So this displays the make and the year. So this is called the Music Pavilion, which is in the shape of a fort because it has two turrets on either side. And this reflection pool is like a moat around a fort. Come, let's go inside and take a look. It echoes because the sound waves keep reverberating between the two turrets. Did you see that? Yeah, I so that's why it is called the music pavilion. And it has a fresco ceiling. So these are mermaid scale fountains and the way the water is cascading down, the sound is very therapeutic for blood pressure. So at Ananda, we have a total of 70 rooms, 5 suites and 3 villas, 78 keys. Villas are the highest category of accommodation that we let out. This is Villa Shivalik, which we are going to take a look at. Come. This is the living room. And it has two bedrooms on either side, which are identical to each other. And a private swimming pool as well. This is the first bedroom on the left, which has a private deck to sit out. So this is the powder room, walk-in wardrobe. We love a good walk-in wardrobe. The bathroom has twin vanity counters, private sauna, bathtub, shower cubicle and WCN bed. So we are going to see the Ananda Suite, it is one of its kind. It has a spacious living room, a bedroom and a private garden. So this is the Ananda Suite. This is a small powder room with the living room. And this is the living room of the suite. The living room and the bedroom is separated by a sliding door. The walk-in wardrobe and that's the bathroom. And the swing! <laughs> and then it opens to its private garden space where you have a gazebo to sit out. This is the private garden to the Ananda Suite. This is beautiful too. And unfortunately, you can't see down there, but today... Yes, if there's a cloud cover, otherwise you can see the valley of Rishikesh with the course of the Holy River oh and God. the backdrop being the hills. So this is the main accommodation of the hotel. This is where most of the rooms are. Out of the 78 keys, 74 are here. And my room is right up there. Wow, this has been actually the second day of rain but hey welcome to my home this has been my home for the past 10 days and will be my home for the entire time my little walk-in robe namaskar all those clothes i do not need and my little haven of a bathroom look I mean, unfortunately, again, it's overcast. I might do this on a beautiful day because when I wake up in the morning and I, hello, <laughs> and I open these curtains and I come out and just see 